Two months ago, I did an episode called The Biggest Danger Facing the Stock Market Right Now. It had Michael Burry's face on it, and it was Michael Burry's warning about hyperinflation. It's about inflation that occurs rapidly, and it grows steadily, and the Fed can't control it. Now, this episode got 670,000 views so far. It's one of my most viewed episodes ever, and I think it's very informative because we dove into Michael Burry's tweets. He tweeted about the concerns of hyperinflation, one of the biggest risks with the overall economy and the stock market. Now, since that episode two months ago, something very concerning has happened. The SEC did not like that Michael Burry was tweeting out concerns about hyperinflation and the fact that inflation could get out of control. And he says that they basically bullied him off of Twitter. They said that if he continues to tweet out these type of things, the SEC is going to come after him. So he actually deleted his entire Twitter account. He hasn't tweeted a thing since. The last thing that he's tweeted about or talked about publicly was his concerns of hyperinflation and then his visit from the SEC. But what I'd like to do in this episode is a follow-up of that one two months ago. I want to see if Michael Burry's concerns of hyperinflation are coming true. Now, the foundation of the warning that Michael Burry gave out two months ago before being kicked off of Twitter was that the U.S. government is giving out enormous amounts of money at a time during high unemployment. And that combination leads to inflation. People have lots of money to spend, but we're not producing enough things to spend it on. From the Washington Post, we read that the U.S. has thrown more than $6 trillion at the coronavirus crisis. $6 trillion. $1 trillion is a thousand billions. Not a hundred billions, but a thousand billions. So that's six thousand billions. That's a lot of money. That's an incomprehensible amount of money. And this article was published in April 15th of 2020, meaning that there's been three additional stimuluses since then. The most recent one was a $1.9 trillion COVID relief bill. It had $1,400 per adult, $300 per week in unemployment insurance, expanded child tax credits, and more money for businesses and other random things. That was another almost $2 trillion being given to individuals. And then, of course, it doesn't stop there. The latest proposal is another $3 trillion stimulus for the economy. This proposal would invest in infrastructure, education, workforce development, fighting climate change in order to make the economy more productive. Now, Michael Burry noted that despite the high levels of money being given out, the unemployment rate is still historically very high at 6%. That's almost double what it was before the pandemic. So the economy has not really recovered. We still have a very high unemployment rate and there's millions and millions of people out of work. Now, despite the unemployment rate being double what it was just a year ago and millions more people being out of work, all the stimulus money has allowed people to buy. And this is where inflation comes in. This is what Michael Burry was warning about. Warren Buffett talked about inflation in a meeting just this last weekend. It just won't stop. Uh, people have money in their pocket and, and they pay the higher prices. And It just won't stop. People have money in their pockets and they're willing to spend it on higher prices. Buffett goes on to talk about the effect all this money in people's pockets is having on the housing market. The costs are just up, up, up. Steel costs... Uh, you know, just every day uh, they're, they're going up. And that, it, he says that his home builders' costs are going up, 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 and the price of steel is going up every single day. Overall, Warren Buffett notes that at least with his businesses, he sees, quote, very substantial inflation and lots of companies raising prices. And he seems to be correct. In fact, just the price of lumber going up has added an additional $36,000 to the cost of a new home. $36,000 just for the increased price of lumber. The journal reports that lumber prices are breaking new records week after week. They say the frenzied climb in lumber prices is generating superlative profits for sawmill owners. The best profits they've ever seen as wood prices pushed further into record territory just last week. Every single week, the prices of wood continues to soar. Now, we can see this effect on home prices across the country. We can also see it anecdotally. My home that I bought in just 2017 has almost doubled in price since then, going up to a valuation of almost $600,000. That's what similar homes in my neighborhood are selling for right now. And the price is accelerating over the past three months, gaining about $50,000 in price in just the past couple months. Now, looping back again to Michael Burry, it seems like he might have some validity to his warning. It seems like some of the things he shared about his concerns of rapidly rising prices are coming to fruition. We see that with the housing market. The price of wood is at an all-time high and it's breaking records every single week. But is this exclusive to the housing market? Is the housing market the only place that we're seeing inflation? Not really. In fact, companies outside of the housing market are likewise rapidly increasing the prices of their products. The Coca-Cola CEO said a couple weeks ago 
and the company will raise prices to offset higher commodity costs. And Coca-Cola, of course, is not the only example. Procter & Gamble, for instance, says the commodity cost challenges we face this year, we're going to offset the portion of this impact with price increases. And some of the ways that these companies increase their prices is very tricky and sometimes hard to see. For instance, here's an example of a, a new paper towel roll that has 140 sheets, and it costs the same as the previous paper towel roll that had 160. So they kept the price the same, most consumers won't notice, but the rolls that you're taking home have 20 less sheets. That is a marginal price increase because the consumer is walking home with less sheets for the same cost. Honeywell says, and for us, inflation is taking hold. There is no doubt about it. We knew it. We see it. It's real. Kimberly Clark says that they've been impacted by stronger than expected demand and a sharp rise in input costs. That's them saying that there's inflation. PepsiCo says in terms of 2021, there's certainly higher input inflation. The cost of their goods are more expensive and they're passing that on to the consumer. Nestle says, I'd like to caution against excessive margin growth expectations based on these strong sales growth. We now see broad-based inflation across our various commodities, packaging materials and transportation costs. Everything is going up in price. Boston Bear notes that they can't even get enough people to work. They say there's a real shortage of drivers and trucks. So the ratio between available trucks and loads have significantly worsened. They say that this is going to affect their margins in the future. Steel Dynamics says that even though they had a record amount of shipments, their operating income was worse than the previous quarter. The lowered earnings were a result of metal spread compression as higher average selling values were offset by significantly higher steel input costs. Everything is more expensive for these companies. Mattel says we're not going to talk about specific pricing action or timing, but we are evaluating price adjustments for recent increases in our input costs. This same thing goes on for company after company. The increase in input costs is causing them to raise their prices for consumers and consumers are willing to pay it. So when I look at the prices of everything, the prices of real estate, the prices of stocks and bonds and crypto, any type of physical asset, as well as the prices that companies that have any type of commodity are charging their users, their customers, everything's going up. Prices are going up everywhere. And it leads me to believe that Michael Burry might be onto something saying that we are at risk for hyperinflation. But Michael Burry is not the only notable person with an opinion on the subject. In fact, this is a heavily debated subject, and many people strongly disagree with Michael Burry's warning. And Janet Yellen, the U.S. Treasury Secretary, is one of them. She does not believe that inflation is a concern. She says, quote, it's spread out quite evenly over 8 to 10 years. So inflation has been spread out quite nicely, quite evenly. She goes on to say, I don't believe that inflation will be an issue. So she doesn't believe it's an issue right now, and she doesn't believe it's going to be in the future. This is all worth it. Even if we have to deal with some inflation, these are historic investments that we need to make our economy more productive and fair. That's the goal of this. The Fed Chair Jerome Powell has basically said the same thing, that inflation is no big deal. We don't have to worry about it. We might see a little inflation in the future. He says, we expect that as the economy reopens and hopefully picks up, we will see inflation move up through the base effects that could create some upward pressure on prices. Just a little upward pressure on prices. It's no big deal. Jerome Powell even goes on to downplay inflation more, saying that even if we have some inflation, we're not going to raise interest rates. He says, quote, there's a lot of ground to cover before we get to that. Even if the economy sees, quote, transitory increase inflation, I expect that we will be patient. Patient meaning that even if they see high levels of inflation, they're not going to increase the federal funds rate. They're keeping it at zero. So whether or not you agree with Janet Yellen and Jay Powell that this is no big deal, the inflation's only temporary, it's not going to stick around forever, or whether you believe that Michael Burry might be right and it could go out of control, either way, I see clear evidence of inflation. I see clear evidence that companies are rapidly increasing their prices, that the costs are going up as a result of inflation. And the question for me is, is how do I protect my portfolio from inflation? How do I protect my finances from inflation? The first thing we can talk about is cash. It's good to have some money on the side for an emergency fund if you lose your job or come across some big life event that you need money for, but having a lot of money sitting in cash, even in a so-called high yield savings account where they offer you a 0.5% interest rate, is going to get eaten away by inflation. 
every single week, every month, every year that goes by, your money is going to be worth less and less as time goes on. So sitting money in cash for long periods of time is a good guaranteed way of losing money. If you want to move your money from cash, you do have some options. Historically, gold has been a good hedge against inflation. There's no guarantee it will be in the future, but historically speaking, gold has been a good hedge. Physical land and real estate is another good option during inflation. Historically, this has performed really well during times of high inflation. Now, even inside of our stock portfolio, there's some things we can do to try to offset the potential threat of inflation. This is my personal portfolio called the Passive Income Account. It's on M1 Finance. If you want to look at the specific companies I'm invested in, there's a link in the description that allows you to click around. Now, the type of investments I'm focusing on in an inflationary environment are companies that have high margins, they have pricing control, and they have high amounts of cash flow. I think that's really important. I've been focusing on buying companies like Microsoft and Apple. These are companies that don't have their margins squeezed away by higher commodity prices. They're companies that have price control. Apple could increase the price of any of their products like iPhones and people would continue to pay it. Same thing with Microsoft. They have good levels of price control, high margins, and their margins aren't going to be squeezed away by inflation. In fact, if we look at the overall market right now and observe what companies are doing well during a time of inflation and concerns of inflation, the companies that have high amounts of cash flow and profits are the ones that seem to be doing well. The Dow Jones is up 13% year to date. That's a really good performance. The S&P 500 is up 13.59%. It's made up in large part by highly profitable companies like the big tech companies. Then we can look at more speculative companies that have lower profits, lower margins, and we go into the ARK Innovation ETF. It's down 6% year to date during a time where the S&P 500 is up 13%. We can look at Wisdom Tree's Cloud Computing Fund. These are companies that are growing rapidly, but they're not that profitable and they don't really have a lot of cash flow. We can observe that the more speculative the investment, the more the profits are out in the future, further the company is away from cash flow, the worse the performance. The SPAC ETF, which is highly speculative companies, are down 8.2%, again, during a time where the S&P 500 is up 13%. So the companies that I've been focusing on, especially with my most recent buys, are ones that I think will do well during long periods of inflation. If that happens, I think these ones will perform really well. JP Morgan is my biggest holding currently. Now, not only will that company benefit if the Fed has to increase interest rates, it'll make them more profitable, but they're already a very high cash flow business. Disney's the next biggest holding. This is a company that's a historically very high cash flow business, and now they have an additional high margin way of distributing their content through Disney+. Plus. Apple's a high margin business. They have price control. They can adjust their prices according to inflation without squeezing away their profits. Microsoft is in the same boat. This is a company with high margins and price control. These are the type of companies that I've been focusing on. So I've been buying these companies very aggressively, trying to move my money out of cash into these great companies that can combat inflation. And it's been working out well so far. If I filter by the past 30 days, one month period, I'm up almost $8,000 and I've earned $551 in dividends. That's a return of 3.47%. That is a really good return over the past month. This money that I'm paid in dividends always gets added to my cash balance, and then I redeploy it right away back into different companies that provide me even more cash flow in the future. So this is the way that I'm dealing with inflation. I'm buying high cash flow businesses that I believe have price control and high margins despite a high inflationary environment. There's different ways that you can handle this. Maybe you wanna buy gold, maybe you wanna buy physical real estate, maybe you wanna move some money out of cash into productive assets that have hedges against inflation. How long this persists is up for debate. Hopefully it is a temporary thing like Janet Yellen and Jay Powell are saying, but if this persists for a long time, you'll want to adjust your portfolio accordingly. So I'd be interested to hear the way that you guys are dealing with inflation, which companies you're buying, what investments you're going into. This is the way that I'm currently dealing with it. And we're going to see how it turns out. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm going to have another video update later this week. So if you want to see the progress of this portfolio, just make sure you subscribe to the channel and you'll be able to track it week by week and see how this does against the inflation. Having said that, I'll see you guys in the next episode.